Hey guys, welcome back to another video with Old Florida. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be tying a variation of a meat whistle. This is going to be Pass's meat whistle. Just a couple little modifications, but let's jump into the vise. First thing we're going to do is take our hook. I'm going to put my cone right on top. I'm going to leave that there one sec. And before I actually put that into the vise, I'm going to go ahead and cut around a five, six inch piece, a little bit over of what you think you're going to need of rabbit strip. This is two-tone rabbit strip. Grab my other scissors. And we're actually going to hook this about an inch and a half right in the middle of our hide through our hook before we go ahead and put that on the vise. So it should be sitting right like this. And then we could go ahead and secure our hook in the vise. I actually like to come in here with a little piece of wire, a pipe cleaner. And I'll tie it right around the base just to make sure it's out of the way, a little tucked secure out of the way. Next up we got our tubing. I'm going to cut around, I don't know, three or four inch section. It's okay if you go a little over two. This does come with a little core or shoelace inner. I just go ahead and pull that whole thing out. It's easier to store it as well. I don't care if it really kinks up at all. So just go ahead and dispose of that. And then we could take our thread and we can start it right behind that cone when it's pushed up forward. Take our thread, put a nice little layer all the way to a little bit behind the barb of the hook and we could trim that out. Then I'm gonna take my thread, I'm gonna move it pretty far forward again little bit less than that cone and we could come in here with our tubing place that right on the top side of the shank of the hook with a pinch wrap we could do a couple loose wraps and secure that right on the bottom side of the shank of the hook make sure we secure that nice and tight and then we could actually move our thread behind all the way to where we stopped. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go ahead and put a rattle inside. This is just a mini sized glass rattle. I'm just gonna pinch it and feed it all the way through. So now we got this nice little sound chamber. I'm gonna pull that a little tight, not crazy tight. You don't wanna pull it super tight because it can split that little web kind of weave and the glass rattle can fall out if you pull too tight. So just secure that enough, but don't pull extra, extra hard. You want to leave it a little bit of room. We could trim that piece out and then taper that back. So that's going to be our glass little rattle. From right here, you can take your thread, jump super far forward. I like to use my thumb and then secure that back down. All I did was go along the side of the rattle right here, if you could see that, and I just jumped my thread all the way forward. Now I can come in here, take my little pipe cleaner out, and this is gonna be our tail. So I'm gonna measure where I think I want this, which is gonna be right in front of that glass rattle. So I like to take this rabbit, pull it right in front of that glass rattle, and then I'll trim just a nick of that off and then I'll trim some of the rabbit off the top of this hide. This just gives us a cleaner tie-in spot. You could see in one sec when I get my fingers out of the way. This gives us a really clean little tying base right there with no fur. You can come in here. I spin my bobbin just to give me a little bit more thread control. So after you got that one wrap, you could do a couple tight securing wraps. You don't have to go crazy. I do tie this fly with 210 thread. You can use 140, but the extra strength of the 210 for this is kind of nice when doing dubbing loops and other stuff. So from here, I'm gonna grab my flashaboo. I like to keep it inside the pack most of the time. You can be pretty generous. I like to grab, I don't know, five, six, seven strands sometimes and trim that out. I'm going to go ahead and take this and make a V on my side. Pull it up. So I got it secured on one side now. I'll just do a couple wraps securing this down the closest side to me. 
I'll pull this over and as I pull it over, I'm going to secure this down to the other side. That will be trimmed out a little bit later, but just for now you can leave it to length. I'll clean up my wraps, just make a small little ramp, and then we're going to take our thread and move it as far as we can back to this uh, rattle and back to our tail. Then I'm going to create my dubbing loop. We have a video on our YouTube channel showing you how to do dubbing loops. So I make my dubbing loop two wraps around the loop. I'm going to take my dubbing device, put this right there. With my dubbing clip now, I'm going to go ahead and take a piece. I'm going to pull it nice and taut. Just going to go against the grain of the hair. Take my dubbing clip and throw that on there. This doesn't have to be a crazy, crazy dense or large dubbing loop. It's just to add a little bit of bulk to keep that hackle that we're going to put up straight. So put that in the dubbing loop, clipped off my little base. The cool thing about the Schmien Bob or Schmien dubbing twister, you can just open up your loop. So super easy just to open up that loop and place this material in here. I'm actually not going to use any dubbing wax just for video purposes, but normally I'd probably throw in a little bit of dubbing wax. You don't really have to, but it does make it a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to take my fingers and I'm just going to spread out this material to where it looks good. I'm going to go ahead and make sure our butts for this dubbing loop are nice and clean. And we could go ahead and give it a spin. I like to pinch right above my material and then give it a good spin and let go all at once. And I'll take my fingers on the thread and I'll make sure it's nice and tight. One more time. You don't want to over twist it. And then the best tool of them all, the little comb. Go ahead and comb out your dubbing loop nice and good. Give it a really good comb out. Awesome. You can take our thread and move it forward right in front of that bump. I'm going to take my fingers and just sweep that material backwards because we're going to be palmering this loop. Once I got that, we can go ahead and start palmering. Nice tight touching wraps. It's important to start as far back toward the bend of the hook as you can as you start wrapping. As you start to go forward, you can get a little bit looser, but really those first two or three wraps are crucial. So we're going to pull all that material nice and tight backwards. Do one last wrap. I got all tangled up in my bobbin. Awesome. Nice tight wrap. I'm just going to pull down and secure that twister and that tag. Come in here and trim this out. Awesome. Pull everything back and do one or two more tight wraps just to make sure everything is nice and secure. Nothing's going to pop off. And I like to give this a really good comb out. This comb makes really quick work of this, much better than a bodkin. All right, sweep everything back, and that's gonna be our collar. Well, one of the two collars, actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a longer schloppen feather. I'm gonna go ahead and run my fingers right down the back of it, straighten out those fibers. I'm gonna come in here at the base. I'm gonna pull out just a little bit at the base. I'm gonna give myself a nice clean tie-in point. So. You don't have to do this, I'm just gonna do it just because it's easier to see on the camera. I just trimmed out a little piece right there. Give us a nice little clean tie-in point. We're gonna tie that in pretty far where the feathers are touching, where those barbs are touching, onto the rabbit collar. I'm gonna put four or five really nice securing tight wraps and go ahead and just trim that little base out. From here, we're just gonna start palmering backwards, so sweep those fibers backwards. I like to put probably around four or so wraps of this hackle, making sure not to trap any of it. So really focus on pulling and sweeping that backwards nice and tight. It's okay if you break it a little bit at the tip. So really sweep that hackle nice and tight. Four to five wraps. I think this one's gonna be a five wrap. And we could pull down and capture that. I'm gonna put two or three more wraps right behind there. 
and I'm going to whip finish right behind that cone, sweeping everything back as I whip finish. The cool thing about this fly, all of this front is going to be covered up with this cone, so you really don't have to worry about getting it looking super pretty as long as it's really nice and tight. I could come in, trim my bobbin out, make sure this hackle is where I want it. If you want, you could come in here with a comb, kind of just comb it out a little bit before we set that cone in place. I'm going to lock my vise upright. Now I could come in here, sweep everything back, push that cone right back up into the material. You can see it kind of stays a little bit, which is really nice. Take my thread and we're going to start it right behind that eye, right behind that bend. We don't want to go up on the bend. We want to really make sure we're doing tight, clean wraps right behind that bend. We do not want to go up on the bend. If you do, your material will start to ride up and it'll start to clump up and look really ugly. So we're going to try to keep it as best we can on that lower level flat part. I only put a couple wraps in front. I'm going to go ahead and try to whip finish it right there. I'm going to do a couple whip finishes making a nice smooth ramp. Bam. Looking really nice. Nice, really tight, clean head. Awesome. I'm going to come in here now with my loon and I'm going to secure this just by putting a good little drop. I'm actually running out. I need another bottle of this stuff soon. Put a little drop. This is a very important step actually. This really does lock everything down. Makes this fly super durable. I'm gonna put a good little drip right here making a good cone shape. Just working my applicator tip right around it. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I like, like it to look pretty. Oh, my UV light is out. That's okay. Forgot to charge it. There we go. Again, hit that with the UV light. We still haven't trimmed this fly yet. These are still the long fibers from the Flashaboo, and we haven't trimmed the tail out. This tail, you can kind of pull a little bit straight or in line. You could pull pretty hard without it ripping, but do be careful. It does rip if you pull extremely hard but we're just gonna slide it up a little bit just to make it more in line with that shank of the hook. Once you got that hit with the torch, I like to come in here, grab my long fibers of the Flashaboo, and I'll just trim them randomly. Trim them all separate randomly just so they kind of splay out everywhere. This I like to come in here on a 45, and I actually like to trim this from one side and then the other to make a little spearhead. And that is gonna be the done fly. This is an extremely versatile little fly. Everything will eat this in freshwater from largemouth bass, peacocks, cichlids, uh, snakeheads if you really get lucky. As you can see, you could hear that. Has a nice little rattle to it. The bottom looks pretty damn clean with the tubing. It pushes a good little bit of water. It gets down in the water column. Perfect for canals, around bridges. Pretty much anywhere in South Florida where there's water, this is a great option. So thank you guys for watching. If you want any of the materials, they can be found on our website with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. And as always, we hope to see you guys out on the water.